Welcome back to the Remington 700 build series. Today we're going to go over the bedding job we did last time, how it improved the groups, and we're going to go to the next stage, which is this guy here. So the next step in our build process is to pillar bed the Boyd stock. And we have it over here. Uh, once this is pillar bedded, uh, we're going to go out and test groups again and see if we can get those groups from uh, 1.2 MOA or 1.2 inches at 100 meters down to the 1 inch at 100, which is where I want to be or smaller if possible. So we're going to uh, get some pillar beds which are on the way, just haven't showed up yet. We're going to drill this out. We're going to uh, get some compound in there, redo the bedding just around the areas of the two um, pillars. And we're going to clamp it up and we're going to torque it down and shoot some more groups. Because the whole idea of this is we're going to just go along and upgrade one thing at a time and check the accuracy. So this is out of the way for the moment just because I'm waiting for pillar beds. There's nothing else I can do. Our pillars, there's nothing else I can do on it. Um, when we shot the groups, which you can see here now in a minute, um, it wasn't as easy as it looks. Uh, the um, first couple of shots were massive. We're, look, we're talking three inch spread. And I was thinking... I have no clue what's going on here. I, I was like, maybe I'm shooting the grass or, or there's, I'm getting su uh, suppressor strikes. Couldn't figure out what it was. After changing stocks and mounts and rails and everything, we found out what it was. It was my Falcon Optics 4, 14 by 44 um, can no longer take the recoil off the wind mag using a brake or a no muzzle device. It's just too much off a shutter, and it uh, it shifts the tube inside. Now these are meant to be rated up to 338 Lapua, and I have no doubt that this could handle a Lapua using a suppressor, but it's not able to hold uh, a zero on a wind mag using a, a tank brake, just because the vibrations, I just break here in particular, the vibrations uh, are just so severe after the shot that um, it just shifts it. Now I don't know why it didn't... Uh, go in the original chassis. The old chassis is it's a lot softer, it's springier. It could have been that it just didn't transfer as much of the recall up to it. I honestly don't know, but it no longer works on my wind mag. So this is gonna go back to where it belongs on my 1022. And we have this guy here, which is the one we shot the groups with, which is a nice Leopold Mark IV. It's one of the older ones. It's a four to fourteen as well. Uh, it's a cycle full complaint, but that's not too bad. We're gonna run it at max zoom all the time. Uh, mill reticle, MOA turrets, pretty standard. I think you can pull these up second hand now for somewhere around three, four hundred euro, which is a little bit more than the Falcon, but not a whole lot. Um, but this is holding a zero perfect with the wind mag with the brake, because uh, I really like to shoot this with the brake because it takes uh, a lot of the, nearly all of the recoil out and gives you a gives you a bit of a peace of mind. So what we have it in here is our next upgrade chassis. So so far we've spent ninety nine dollars on a stock. And we've spent a little bit of time and maybe 15, 20 dollars or euros on uh, on the bedding compound and a bit of time. We've brought it down from a 1.8 uh, inch group at 100 meters down to a 1.2 group, 1.2 inch group at 100 meters, which is nice. And that's just not not just a one-off. I shoot this constantly when I'm not um, testing it. Uh, since the first grouping, I have fired some about 48 rounds. Um, just for doing other stuff for hunting and such and uh, it really has brought down the groups just um, uh, a lot since the, the initial stacked 1.8 inch group so you can see this new group which we're playing now uh, is it's stacked as well but nowhere near as much we're talking 1.2 inches instead of 1.8 and that's that's kind of where it's going to be at the moment until we get this pillar bedded hopefully when the pillars go in We'll be down to the magical one inch at a hundred, or maybe even less. Um, and then, once that's done, we're going to move to this chassis. Now, this is probably the cheapest entry-level aluminium chassis out there. It's Type 3 military-grade anodized, so it's rock-hard coating, as well as some uh, nice cherry coat, which is pretty sweet. Uh, this stuff's not going to chip off, it's not going to come off with solvents. It's on there, it's caked on. Um, I have a little, uh, I think it's a five round mag that I got with this. If I can get the mag out. 
and um, it's just a lovely little system. It is rock solid. Uh, it is lighter by a good bit than the 15 and a half ish pounds Boyd stock. Uh, it's not as light as the seven pound plastic stock, but I mean, you're not going to get aluminium that weighs the same as plastic like that. Um, at the moment, we have a Ergo Grips uh, grip with a nice swollen palm rest, so you can rest your hand on it without having to uh, take a full pitch of the grip. It's nice, you can just rest your thumb above here and bang. Um, so it's a nice it's a nice one for accuracy. The buttstock is going to be replaced. This is actually off my 1022. This is a, you can recognize this, it's a Magpul CTR stock, which is the one that you can slide that has the little lock that locks it up solid, which is really nice. But it has very little adjustability, you've no cheek rise and you've no ability to uh, rotate the butt plate, uh, plate or move it up and down. So we have something from XLR Industries in the, in the mail that will uh, get us all up to speed. And hopefully, when this is all good to go, I would like to see this being something like 0.5 or 0.6 MOA gun. Uh, if I can get it even smaller, that's even better. But this is still a factory barrel and there's been no work done to the action. The only work that's been done by a smith is the threading for the brake. The next uh, plan that we're going to do is I'm probably going to go and uh, look a bit back more into the 1022 videos. I have to put a new barrel or a refinished barrel on an original action to see what kind of accuracy that does. And we're kind of doing that alongside this build. We'll also... Um, be shooting groups with a different gun. We have a, a Howa short action in 223 that came straight from its chassis straight into a, I can actually show you the chassis here. Came straight from this chassis here, which is the standard Howa heavy laminate uh, varmint thumb hole uh, stock, which is very rigid and it has been bedded years ago by myself. And this thing shoots great all day long. This thing um, was an amazing little shooter. We've been playing around with the other version of the MDT chassis, the one for the Hawa, and we'll be doing a full review on that soon. It's a lot different to the Remington one. It's completely uh, built different. There's actually more surface contact with the action inside because of the Hawa's flat bottom. Um, there's a couple of teething problems setting it up, but we're going to run a full review on that, and we're going to shoot some groups with it soon. Um, I expect that that is going to be something like a 0 .3, 0 .4 MOA gun once it's done. But for now, I'll leave you with that. Thanks for watching. If you found uh, that the series that you're watching is interesting or um, would like to ask me any questions, just give me a, a question below. I'll answer pretty quick. And uh, if you feel like um, watching the video, subscribe and you'll get a notification whenever a new video is up. And um, if it wasn't for you guys and for subscribers, uh, people like MDT wouldn't give me cool toys to test out and I wouldn't be able to show you how they work. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and I'll see you next time.